Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another really interesting problem for us. We start out with a container made out of metal with a liquid inside. The pressure of the liquid is one atmosphere and the temperature initially is at 80 degrees centigrade. We have a piston at the top and now the piston pushes down onto the liquid until the pressure has increased to 100 atmosphere still at a temperature of 80 degrees centigrade. Now the question is what must we change the temperature to? Obviously, we need to cool it down in order for the pressure to go back to one atmosphere. So we can accomplish that. So the piston will keep it at that volume because you have to compress the liquid a little bit to get up to 100 atmosphere. And at that point, the piston will stay in place, will allow heat to escape from the liquid to the metal container. And what will be the final temperature when the pressure has regained the one atmosphere? We're told that the compressibility of the liquid, K sub L, is 50 times 10 to the minus 6 per atmosphere. The, the uh, volume coefficient of expansion, 5.3 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree for the liquid. And the linear coefficient of expansion for the metal, 10 times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree. Hmm. So first, let's find the change in the volume relative to the original volume based upon, well, let's see here, based upon the change in temperature. We don't know what the change in temperature is, right? We don't know what the delta T is. So let's set up an equation to calculate delta T. And we can say this, that the change in the volume is equal to the original volume times, well, because we have the liquid inside a container, we have to take the volume coefficient of expansion minus three times the linear coefficient of expansion, that would be the net coefficient of expansion of the liquid minus the expansion of the metal times delta T. And so we can say that the ratio of delta V over V sub naught is equal to, well, let's calculate these out, that would be 5.3 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree minus 3 times, that would be 30, times 10 to the minus 6 per centigrade degree times delta T, like this. So then when we come up here, we can calculate the delta T in terms of everything else. Delta T is going to be equal to delta V over V sub naught. Now this appears to be the strain caused by that pressure, and we're going to divide that by 5.3 minus that, that would be 5 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree. Okay, so now we have an equation that gives us the delta T, but now we need to find the stress. And remember, we know that the bulk modulus is by definition equal to the stress divided by the strain. And we note that the bulk modulus is 1 over the compressibility. And this, by definition, is the stress or the pressure. I guess we could write this. This is the pressure divided by the change in the volume over V initial. So you can see that this is what we need to go up there. So we need to solve for that. That means that the change in the volume over initial volume is equal to pressure times the compressibility. All right, let's go ahead and plug that in. The pressure would be 100 atmospheres because we want to go from 100 back to 1. And the compressibility, K, I go, some people will say, hey, wait a minute, there's 99 atmospheres difference, but maybe the delta is 100, so let's see. Well, close enough. We'll just round it off to 100 atmosphere. And the compressibility was equal to 50 times 10 to the minus 6 per atmosphere. So let's go, let's make it 101 atmospheres. There we go, 101. There we go. So that the delta, so the delta pressure is equal to 100 atmosphere. Okay, that makes it better than the numbers are a little bit more rounded. So that means that the delta V over V initial is equal to 100 times this. That would be 50 times 10 to minus 4 or 5 times 10 to the minus 3, and the atmospheres cancel out, and that's a ratio. There we go. 
so which is equal to 0 0.005. Now the change in the temperature. So now we can say that delta T is equal to delta V over V sub naught, which is 0 0.005 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree. And so the delta T is equal to 10 centigrade degrees. Now, for the pressure to drop, the temperature had to go down. So we can say that T final equals T initial minus the delta T. So this is equal to T initial, which is 80 degrees centigrade minus 10 centigrade degrees, which is 70 degrees centigrade for the final temperature. And the pressure will be back to one atmosphere. And that is how it's done.